Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.0. In this video, I'm going to continue the Murder Hill House Mystery Series. We started with part one. and part two, we're going to add to the existing passages, change some things up, and move towards recreating Clue or Cluedo and our story here we're creating in Twine. So in this part, I'm going to combine the following techniques. We're going to talk about including, that is displaying one passage in another, and in one case, displaying one passage in another passage in another passage. And we're going to talk about using custom CSS styles within the HTML and the passages. So we started that in the last video. We started with some HTML. This time, we're going to add CSS to the existing HTML and provide even more variation to how things are displayed visually. So let's play this story. Hi, welcome to Murder Hill House Mystery. <laughs> so in this game, you will investigate a murder in the appropriately named Murder Hill House. Because why call it that? So your job is to interview people, collect clues, and try to solve the murder. So if you saw the first video, what I said then, as, as I'm going to say now, this is a pretty blatant copy of the game Clue or Cluedo, depending on where you're from. So I'm ready. So again, we approach the house and we're given a map. So it allows us to see the nine different areas, the kitchen, ballroom, conservatory, dining room, cellar library, lounge, hall, and study. And of course, again, we have our notebook, and we have things we already know. We know about the candlestick for the weapon, we know about Miss Scarlet for the people, and we know about the ballroom for the places. So we start with some existing knowledge that we have recorded in our notebook. So let's start with the kitchen. Now, immediately you'll notice this time there's sort of a large black rectangle at the top of the screen. This is sort of our dialog box. While we have our map at the bottom of the screen, we have our dialog box along with colored text on top of the black dialog box at the top of the screen. So moving on into later videos, every time we talk to a character or we learn something from that character, it will be color coded to their name. For example, this is Mr. Green, and I know because it's already green. And we see it's also on a black background. Now the reason for the black background is because of Mrs. White whose text would be white and our background now is already white so that would be white text on a white background and it would be very hard to read. So we're using a black background. So we have a nice dialog box at the top now and we have colored text corresponding to which character we're talking to and of course we have our map. So we're currently in the kitchen. We move to the ballroom. Oh, and we see there are two people in the ballroom. Move the conservatory. There's somebody in the conservatory. Dining room. Oh, nobody in here. Cellar, library, lounge, hall, and there's somebody in the study. Now you may have noticed as I'm going through it, this was a surprise to me as well. Now the reason for that is because in this video we're moving towards random placement. Just like in the game Clue or Cluedo, people are scattered throughout the various places. In fact, if you're playing with people, if you're playing this game sort of together in a boardroom, a board game, or you're playing in a digital setting, you'd be moving various people around the board. In this case, you're actually showing up as a detective and talking to people in the house. So the way I've set this up is that people are randomly scattered throughout the nine different areas. They could be in any of them, the kitchen, the ballroom, conservatory, dining room, cellar, library, lounge, hall, or study. And each time you run the story, it scatters them again. And it uses that using the random macro, as I'll show in just a second. But as you also saw, as I talked about when we were in the kitchen, Every time we talk to somebody, we see their color. So as I was moving through, we saw hello, hello. They're not very talkative this time, but we're seeing our characters and their colors and in a dialog box as we move around the map. Okay, so let's go look, see what this code looks like. So let's start with the story init passage. So as I talked about in the previous video, we were doing three initial things. We were initializing three data maps a weapons data map that had all of our weapons, a rooms data map that had all of our rooms, and a suspects data map that had all of our suspects. In each case, we were using either true or false, and this was, as I mentioned, an explicit inventory. That is, the user already has everything, and whether or not they can see it or know it is true or false. So we turn it true if they know it and false if they don't. So we started with the candlestick, which was true, the ballroom, which was true, and we knew about Miss Scarlet, which was also true. Now we're adding this time a data map of location. 
And location, remember the data map has a key value pair. So Miss Scarlet is set to a random number between one and nine. Professor Plum is set to a random number between one and nine. And the same with Miss Peacock, Mr. Green, Colonel Mustard, and Miss White. So each time we start the story, and story in it is displayed, is included. What you're doing very the very beginning of story, it's displaying story in it. And story in it is setting the data map to the key value pairs of the name of the, the person, the suspect, and some random number between one and nine. Now the one and nine is important because it's one of our nine rooms, starting with kitchen and ending with study. Now let's pull up kitchen for a second. Now as you'll notice, each room has been changed. Now we're using HTML, a division here, a div, along with setting its class to char background, character background. We're setting the variable place to its number. In this case, kitchen is one and study is nine, running in order from left to right, kitchen, ballroom, conservatory, dining room, cellar, library, lounge, hall, study. So each time we move to one of those locations, each time this passage is run, it sets place to a number, and it displays the passage place the character. Now let's look at place character. Now place character is pretty straightforward. It runs a conditional statement, an if macro, for each character, checking against its place. So if Miss Scarlet's location, if location is Miss Scarlet, is place, that is for each passage we look at, if it's one for kitchen, then we display Miss Scarlet. If we were in the kitchen and Professor Plum is also in the kitchen, display Professor Plum. So this gives us the ability, every time we go to location, to see if a person is in there. And then remember, at the beginning of the story, they were all randomly set. So they're all given a random number, and we see each time we move to a location whether or not they're in that room. Now something to be careful of, and it's not used in here, is that we don't want people to move around. Uh, and so I established at the very beginning of the story, uh, okay, everyone was told to stay where they were. And so this established narratively the mechanic of people being in a certain room. So we go to a certain room and they're in that certain room. We don't have to worry about them moving around too much. And so we can interview them, as this text says, whenever we want. This little narrative uh, contrivance for, for why people are randomly distributed about a house and why they don't walk around. So as we saw with study, as we're gonna see with kitchen and we'll see with every story, we have the character background style as a class for division. We're setting the place, like I said. We're displaying place character, which decides whether or not the character is in that room. And we have all of that wrapped in a character background. Now, character background is part of the custom styles. So the edit the story style sheet, you pull up edit story style sheet from the menu, and you look at what I've added since last time. So during the last video, I mentioned that we're display none. So we're hiding the twine sidebar. We're adding extra border spacing to the table. We're creating a black border around notebook. And now for each character, they also have a color. So Colonel Mustard is yellow. Mrs. White is white. Professor Plum is purple. Miss Peacock is blue. Mr. Green is green. And Miss Scarlet is red. Conveniently matching their colors whenever possible. And the character black background, as we saw, was black. So character background is background color, which is black. So whenever any room is run, the division has its style set to character background for its style class, which has a black background. Whenever it displays place character, it runs each character. Now, you may have noticed that on the screen, but I haven't gone over that yet. So each character now has its own passage. Miss Scarlet, Mr. Green, Professor Plum, Colonel Mustard, Miss Peacock, and Miss White. And in each case, they have their own class set to the character colors as I, saw, as I showed you in when editing the story of style sheet. So in this case, class Scarlet 
is red text. So the red text, when run from a room, will be set on the back on the black background. So we have a black background, and then we have their colored text matching their color for whatever character they are when they speak. As I mentioned, that's our dialog box. So we know whenever we're looking at a character, whenever we're interacting with them, we can know who they are through their color. So Scarlet for red, Mr. Green for green, etc. I also went ahead and added weapons as passages. However, I'm not doing anything with those in this video. We're just adding them because, like the people, as we move forward, they will also be randomly distributed throughout the house. And so we'll have the people and the weapons each time we play be in a different location, giving us the chance each time to resolve the mystery if we want. And so we have a movement in this video compared to the last one of setting up all the locations. And so all the locations were passages. Now, in this video, we have all of the people being passages and all of the weapons being passages. And we have the people and eventually the weapons being displayed, being included, displayed in another passage. We also have a multi-level display going on. For each room, it's displaying place character. And each time place character is checking a random value, it's also displaying another passage. And so this allows us to create a complex chain of embedding one passage in another and another. And each time, if we want, as I'm showing, using CSS styles and HTML to create a different visual layout. So we can layer passages displaying one and another and another, and also visually change that each time. So we have, in the example of Miss Scarlet, red text set on a black background. all set up in this video just using, as I mentioned at the beginning, CSS and HTML and different ways of approaching displaying one passage in another. So the only real addition between the last video and this video was a handful of new passages, one for each character and one for each weapon, and the assigning of a room value, a random number between one and nine, for each person, meaning they are now placed in a room. And so if we want to see if they're placed, well, we check the variable place here. So place equals 1 in kitchen through 9 in study. And we have a way of telling, of matching, that is, the location set by the random number when the story is initialized to the hard-coded number within each passage. So if 1 equals 1, then someone's in the kitchen, etc. As we move into the next video, we'll transition between not even including people, but as I said, including weapons, and a way to interact with people, because that's part of how Clue or Cluedo works as well, as we want to be able to talk to people. And so each person, like their colors, will now have personalities. And so we'll have a way to actually solve this murder, because right now we're actually not solving anything. We're, we're just saying hello to everyone, which is a fine way to start, but we really want to solve that murder. <laughs> Thanks for watching.